Well, good afternoon, everyone, or morning, or evening, or midnight, whenever you happen to be watching. Thanks for watching. Hello, I am Keone Hutton from the Haunting You podcast. I've been putting together these videos where I talk about the um, various components that I'm using to build all of the props and effects that I'm using for this year. And today, I want to take a moment to talk about fright props director software you may or may not have seen one of my previous videos where i talk about the peekaboo controller the peekaboo controller is super easy to use super easy to program just by pressing a couple of buttons uh, you can program it completely but fright props has a number of other controllers that can do uh, much more thing many more or that have many more features that take a little bit more Let's call it deliberate programming or fine programming and they can do a lot of things and so today what I want to do is talk about their director software and the director software is a completely free piece of software that you can download from their website and then do all your programming right there in the software and then transfer it onto the controller it's very cool so that's what I want to talk about today so for starters I want to jump over to fright props website this is fright props website and if you go into their over here to controllers and click on boo box it will show you all of the different controllers that they have that uh, you can use right here is the director software download it is completely free you do not have to have one of their controllers you don't have to pay any money to get it you can download it play with it and see if it works well for what you're trying to do the other thing I want to point out while I'm here is they also sell this it's called the director connect this is a cool little box because it will allow you to connect your computer directly to the controllers so that you can control the props as you are programming in real time. So the way I'm going to do it today is just do it all in the software. Then I have to export it to a micro SD card that I'll then put into my controller to test. So if there's anything wrong, I'll have to take it out, put it, go back to the computer, make adjustments, re-export it, and, um, and iterate that way. With this Director Connect, uh, you can see in live, in real time, uh, all the changes that you're making to see if it's doing what you want. Very cool, but extra hundred bucks that I just haven't invested yet. But back to the software. So the Director software. When you first, after you've downloaded and when you first open it, this is the screen that you will see. In our case, we want to go to a new show. And when you click on that, it will show you all of the different controllers that you can potentially use it with. So the controller that I am using is this. This is the Peekaboo MP3. It is very similar to the Peekaboo that I um, did my previous video on. You see it's got all the same buttons. I'm trying to do this backwards. It's got all the same buttons here down at the bottom and you can program it the uh, exact same way hitting the record button, pushing the button for the output that you want, and then it will save it that way. A completely legitimate way to program this controller, but we're gonna do it with the director software. So we want to select the Peekaboo MP3, and you see it comes in a two or a four channel option. I have the four channel, four buttons, four relays, four channel. So we're going to go to the four channel option. And then you just t and then you can title it whatever you want. So the project I'm working on is animating props at a at a mini golf course. And so this prop is going to be a grandfather clock. And when patrons hit their ball into the grandfather clock, the clock is going to start spinning. The uh, a skull is going to pop up from the top of the skull and it's going to say something funny to them, uh, making fun of how badly they play golf, something like that. So this one is going to be time to improve and that's a reference to and that's a reference to the uh, the audio that uh, we'll be using with it so peekaboo mp3 four outputs we've named it now we can create the show and it will automatically populate now with uh, what your controller can do so it gives us our four outputs and we're ready to, to begin to make it easier I want to rename each of these outputs so that we know exactly what's happening so output number one is what I'm going to use to control the clock face spinning. So that is my clock. And that's just a simple um, 12 volt DC motor. As soon as you apply power to it, it starts spinning and, and there's nothing else to it. Output number two is going to control the jaw of the talking skull. Um, this uses a servo. Anytime 12 volts is applied, the jaw opens. So anytime we want it to open, we just apply 12 volts to it and uh, and it will do it. We want it to close, we just take the 12 volts away and it will close uh, just using the spring. 
So this is skull jaw. And then outputs three and four, I'm reserving for a linear actuator. This is a linear actuator. A linear actuator is like a pneumatic piston, except it's completely electronic. You see here on one side, this is a 12 volt motor. Um, and that 12 volt motor, when you apply 12 volts to it, it makes the piston come out. When you reverse the polarity, put positive to negative and negative to positive, it will retract. Uh, there are a ton of different kinds of linear actuators. This is a low speed one linear actuator um, that is sold by Fright Props. It moves about two inches per second. It's a 12 inch linear actuator. Oh. I also picked up this one. This is a 20 inch high speed linear actuator. Notice no motor on the end. A high speed linear actuator will have the motor internal uh, to the shaft, so it takes up a little bit less space, it moves much faster, but it also cannot lift as heavy of an object. For me, I'm just lifting a small skull, we're talking like three pounds, not a, bit, not a heavy lift, and it's perfectly fine for my application. Uh, I intend to do a video just on linear actuators, so be looking for that if you want to learn more about that. But here I have two outputs that I need to control that linear actuator, one to make the piston go out, one to make the piston go back in. So that is what I'm going to call this. Output three will be piston out. And output four will be piston in. Perfect. So now uh, our channels are all set up. So let's take a look at the, uh, the rest of the interface. Uh, up in the top left hand corner, you have a number of options. Uh, new, of course, will let you set up, um, bring up a new program or start a new file rather. Uh, and open lets you open an existing program. I'm not going to do that because we're doing here because I want to work on this one. Um, the save button, self-explanatory, and then export. Export is what you what we will use at the end once all the programming is done to send it to um, our SD card. And then uh, over to the right, we have some more tools. Uh, zoom in, zoom out lets you uh, will change how you're looking at the uh, the seconds. You want to zoom in, get a more fine detail. You can do that. Uh, and then right here uh, is where I really want to focus next, sound. So we're going to be synchronizing all of the effects to a sound file that I built in Audacity. So let's bring that up first. We're using the, where we're trying to do time to improve, so we find the time to improve. There is our file. And um, it's asking, do we want to make our scene length equal to the length of the sound? And in this case, we do, because we only want animation to be happening uh, in the sound. So yes, we do want that to be the same. And you can see that it has now automatically set uh, the scene length to the length of my sound. So let's hear what we are working with today. There's no need to cry. You have plenty of Time to improve. <laughs> perfect. So, um, that's perfect. So the patrons hit the ball into the clock, and this is the audio that will play. The skull is going to pop up and, and make fun of them. So how do we make it do that? That is what we are trying to do today. So now I'm going to scroll in a little bit, just using the track wheel on my mouse. It's super easy to... Uh, change what's happening here. You just left click uh, and drag anywhere that you want the prop to turn on and it will turn dark blue. So, and then to get rid of it, you can just click on the same, left click on it to erase. Super easy to program. So in, the ca in our case now, as soon as they hit the clock, we want the clock's face to start spinning. So the clock is going to be on for basically the entirety, whoops, control Z, whenever you screw up. Clock face will be on for the entirety of the animation. Yeah, turn off after the last ding and the sound of the bell is just ending. <laughs> yep, so that's when it will end. And then I wanna zoom in over here because I see a spot where I missed. So I'll just fill that in real quick. Perfect. Okay, so now clock will be on the entire time. 
the piston, very similar, we want the piston to extend at the beginning so that everybody can see the skull before it starts talking. So in our case, that piston, that high speed piston I showed you will, it moves at a speed of about two inches per second. So uh, I want it to extend 10 inches. I need it to be on for five seconds. And at very similarly for piston in, I need to bring it back in. So from 15 to 20 seconds is when uh, we want that to, uh, to collapse. Okay, so now we have our clock set up. We have the piston going out. We have the piston going in. All we have to do now is synchronize the jaw of the skull. This is the trickiest part, but the director software has a very cool feature that will help us do that. So I'm going to click on the channel that we want to animate, which is the skull jaw, and I'm gonna come up here to effect. There are a bunch of different effects that are built in already to the director software, but the one I wanna focus on right now is this pulse effect. The pulse effect is cool because it will automatically turn on a channel anytime the level of the audio, the amplitude of the audio, so how loud it is, exceeds a certain threshold. And you can control that threshold right here. You can see by cranking it all the way up, nothing gets that loud and so there are no, um, nothing is turned on. But if I bring it back, as I bring it down, more and more starts to fill in until, yeah, the entire audio is above, is above five, so way too low. So we're gonna set this right at 60 and let's see how that looks. 60, perfect. And it looks like it's pretty darn close. We'll have to, definitely we'll have to go back in and fine tune a little bit, but it's it's a good starting place. Let's, what if we crank it up to 70? That looks a little bit closer. Okay, so we, I'm gonna go with that. Um, down here, the audio channel to use, you can use your left channel. Uh, so this is your left channel, this is your right channel because it's a stereo audio recording. If it were a mono audio recording, there'd only be one of those. Uh, or you can use mixed, which will choose the highest amplitude from either one of those uh, to turn it on. You can use just one or both, totally your preference depending on what your sound is. I'm using both. Okay, and then we just hit okay, and it has automatically filled in where it thinks uh, the skull should be talking. And now we can just go back and um, play and see where it is, and then we can fine tune from there. So uh, I want to start it, you know, just a little bit before because I don't need to listen to the whole thing. And let's see when he starts talking. There's no need. Okay, so this is where he will start talking, and so we really need that to turn on a little bit earlier. There's no need, so there's no need to cry. That's what we're going for. There's no need to cry. We gotta make the cry a little bit longer. So let's see how we did. There's no need to cry. No, it's a little late. This, should, this is no. Scoot it to the left a bit. There's no need to cry. I think this one's a little late too. It's a little. There's no need to cry. You have plenty. Perfect. So now we'll keep moving on. You have. You have plenty of. And to make the jaw look realistic, we want it to be actuating on every syllable. Like, watch my jaw as I'm speaking. Every syllable. It move. my jaw actuates with every syllable. And so we're trying to do the same with the skull. Every syllable, we have a 12 volt pulse and that will, uh, will cause it to actuate realistically, relatively. You have plenty of. You have plenty of. Plenty's a little late. You have plenty of time. Time. Nice. Nice and big. Emphasized.
because it's a clock and it's funny. Time to improve. Time to improve, I hope. Time to improve. Two is a little late. Time to improve. Of time to improve. <laughs> okay, so that is pretty close. And now the laughter. I can zoom in a little bit and really just follow the the impulses or follow the waveform. Every time it gets big, that is clearly a place where he's laughing. Most of those look pretty good. That's what I'm not so sure about. <laughs> sure, I'm not catching the bell. <laughs> Improve. <laughs> and then it retracts. Okay. That, I think we just about have it. So let's zoom out real quick. Take a look at the whole thing from the beginning. There's no need to cry. You have plenty of time to improve. <laughs> stop there first and foremost of course going to save it in case anything happens and then I want to grab my micro SD card and put it into the computer okay so SD card in the computer and now we are going to export so we want to run the show from the SD card so um, the SD card will be in we're not just loading it onto the uh, onto the controller's internal memory. Uh, the Peekaboo MP3 does not have an internal memory. Some others do, so it doesn't even give us that, cho that choice. So we're going to run it from the SD card. The SD card is uh, drive D on my computer. It may be something different on yours. Please, uh, please note that. And then you just hit export. And now it has um, put it onto the SD card. So I can extract that. And then I just take my SD card, put it right into the SD card slot. It's kind of hard to read, but into the SD card slot on the controller, and then it will be ready to go. So give me a moment to hook this up, and then we'll take a look at what the output looks like. Okay, so let's take a look at how we did. I have my test bed set up over here. Um, you can see the linear actuator right here. I've got the skull set up on a uh, its own stand. Eventually it'll be mounted on here. We're not there yet. And I've got my clock over here. Uh, so let's, let's see how it looks. There's no need to cry. You have plenty of time to improve. <laughs> absolutely perfect exactly what i was hoping it would do so that's it it is that easy to get started with designing your own animations exporting it and then putting it into a peekaboo or uh, boo box controller to uh, to control your animations i hope you got something out of this if you have any questions please leave it in the comments and i'll do my best to address them uh, definitely check out our other videos and like and subscribe to our youtube channel if you want to be notified when i post new videos or other tutorials um, as we get closer to the season there's definitely going to be more building as happening check out our home check out our page www.huntingyou.com where you can find uh, the podcast and everything else that we do lots of cool stuff up on that website definitely go check it out in the meantime Thank you for watching, and as always, happy haunting.